Hey everybody, welcome back to the Tokenomics Design Playlist. In this step, we're talking about value accrual. As a disclaimer, as a reminder, this content is for educational purposes only. It is not legal, financial, technical, or investment advice. Value accrual is the second step of our seven-step tokenomics design process. Each video in this playlist outlines one of these steps. So if you're just diving in now, you might want to take a step back, watch the previous video where we started our process. As we saw in the previous video as well, each of these videos is going to be walking through a step of the tokenomics design canvas. And so today, or, or in this video, we're going to be talking about value accrual. There, when it comes to value accrual, you need to think about the fact that even small differences can actually have a big impact. So, for example, this was a this was an example brought up by Beeple um, in an NFT marketplace context, right? You could theoretically charge a seller's fee. You could charge a fee to the seller selling their NFT, or you could charge the fee to the buyer buying the NFT. Even with the same fee, right? Let's say it's one percent. Even with the same fee, this seemingly simple distinction of who pays the fee can have quite a large impact. If you charge it to sellers, then sellers, for example, might go to different marketplaces that don't charge a fee. And so you're going to have less, uh, less supply on your system and buyers are going to be looking for protocols with the most supply. And so they're going to go elsewhere as well. So just switching, even if the fee is the same percent, Switching from a seller's fee to a buyer's fee, for example, could result in more supply, which means more demand in turn, which means more uh, growth and revenue and, and uh, success for the protocol in turn. So it's important to really think through the nuances of each of these decisions that you make when it comes to value accrual. Another thing to just keep in mind is that there's really these three related but distinct concepts that people sometimes uh, interchange or mistakenly use um, in place of another. The first is value creation, right? So every product needs to create a value, user benefits created, right? If we think about uh, Uber, right? Uber makes it easy to get around. It creates value for riders as well as drivers. Value capture then is the protocol taking a portion of that value that's created as fees. I'm more than happy to pay a fee to use Uber because it's so beneficial to me. It creates a lot of value for me, and then I pay for a portion of that value it creates for me. In the context of Web3, though, it's, it's one thing to create value, right? It's one thing to have a product like Uniswap that's very useful to use. It's another thing to then capture that value where people are paying fees to the protocol. And it's a third distinct thing that that value accrues to the token, actually benefits the token. And so without all three, value creation, value capture, and value accrual, your token is purely speculation if you're missing any one of these three. So let's walk through an example, right? So we're returning to our curve CRV example. Uh, you'll notice that the value accrual worksheet looks very similar to the previous worksheet we looked at for objectives and requirements. And like I said, you always have the roles on each of these sheets. And so we have liquidity providers, traders, and liquidity bribers uh, as common roles in the Curve ecosystem that we're going to look at in every single case. And so in this case, we want to first answer uh, for liquidity providers, what value does the product Curve create? Well, it creates value for liquidity providers by earning them a yield from trading fees. I provide liquidity and I earn a yield based on, that is that is uh, earned from traders placing trades and, and paying fees. And so I get this yield that I wouldn't otherwise have as a liquidity provider by using Curve. How does the product capture some of that value? How does Curve capture that value? Well, part of the trading fees goes to the protocol itself. So the protocol itself makes revenue or makes fees, captures fees uh, as traders place trades. You want to think about the downsides, though, to capturing the value at this point, right? If, as we just talked about in the NFT marketplace context, if we charged sellers a fee, there are downsides to doing so, right? If they're charged buyers a fee, there are different downsides to doing so. So we always want to be thinking about what are the downsides, because you can charge people fees all day long. In theory, that'll be better and make higher revenues, but there's always a trade-off. 
And so in this case, directing fees to the protocol actually reduces yield provided to liquidity providers, right? And maybe that's fine. Maybe we're okay with that. But it's important to, to explicitly uh, mention and, and, and have in our heads what the trade-off is that we're making. And so in this case, there's kind of this give and take pull of fees that go to the protocol or fees that go to liquidity providers. And finally, how does the capture value accrue to the token? Well, in the case of Curve, again, protocol revenues are actually distributed directly to token holders. Now, that might not be doable for everyone, right? This is a this is a special case that you would need to consult a lawyer about uh, that might have regulatory implications. But other examples would be, you know, the token itself enabling some kind of special utility or a discount to a service um, or, or um, have you can only use it to access certain things. So there's value to the token that is coming from part of this process. Because it's useful to use the protocol and because I need the token to access the protocol, right? there's value accruing to the token, for example. So by completing the value accrual worksheet, we have, we have specified for each of these roles where value is being created, captured, and accrued to the actual token, as well as thinking about some of these trade-offs that we might wanna make when thinking about where exactly do we capture value uh, in, this, in this ecosystem. And so that's value accrual. Up next, we're gonna talk about token lifecycle patterns. As a brief reminder, right, it's completely normal that we complete a couple steps and then have to go back and change things. Just make sure if you do so that you uh, change things in each single step that you've worked on, uh, that, you're, that you're going through each of these steps each time you go back. So you can get all these resources at these links, including the tokenomics design canvas, and I'll see you in the next video on lifecycle patterns.